Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to talk about the importance of density, the value that you can actually see right here in both looking for exoplanets but specifically looking for planets that we can maybe call home in the future because density is very important and shows us quite a lot. Let's talk about this in more detail and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So what exactly is density? Well, it's of course the amount of mass per volume. If you decrease density and change the density of our planet Earth to make it very similar to, for example, um, the planet Saturn, our planet would actually be ridiculously large. It would be 12,000 kilometers in radius. In comparison to the original Earth, this is what it looks like. If you were to, on the other hand, decrease the density to, let's just say, um, the density of metal like mercury, it would be a little bit uh, smaller than actual Earth and would very likely spin a little bit faster and possibly have some other effects that we can't really imagine yet. But um, we're going to be talking about density of various planets, but specifically here, we're going to apply this idea to exoplanets. But to begin, let's actually maybe take a look at all of the planets here. And specifically, we're going to look at terrestrial planets and compare them to the gas giants. All of the terrestrial planets are known for relatively high density. For Mercury, it's 5.43. Uh, that's because it actually has quite a large iron core. Venus is relatively similar at 5.24. Uh, and Earth is the highest of all planets is at 5.51 gram per centimeter cube. Mars is a little bit lower at 3.93, which suggests to us that it doesn't have as much iron and uh, it might be actually one of the reasons why Mars lost its um, uh, magnetosphere relatively quick or maybe actually never had magnetosphere to begin with uh, when it was created. We know it had the atmosphere before, we know it had liquid water before, there's a lot of signs pointing at that, uh, but we also know that its magnetosphere may have actually disappeared and when it disappeared it took with it the water and the atmosphere. So this is one of the reasons why Mar Mars is actually so uh, barren today. Now let's look at the gas giants. So uh, Jupiter is actually um, relatively high for a gas giant. Its um, actual density is 1.33 grams per centimeter cube, but that's of course about three times or close to even four times um, lower than Earth. If we were to change this to density of Earth, this is what Jupiter would look like. It would be a little bit smaller. So here's Earth in comparison to Jupiter with uh, Earth-like density. Saturn has the lowest density of all of the gas giants. It's um, 0.6 or almost 0.7 grams per centimeter cube. If we were to change this to the density of Earth, it would be this small. And this is Earth. Um, and most of this is because, uh, for the most part, gas giants have uh, very, very little dense material on the inside and the rest is just hydrogen and uh, helium and uh, basically gases. That's why they're called gas giants. So, um, in a nutshell, planets like Saturn with a um, density of 6, 681 grams per centimeter cube um, are, actually have lower density than that of water. So hypothetically, and this is, you may have heard this before, if uh, Saturn was surrounded by water, you would actually be floating in it. Well, that's kind of unrealistic because this would never happen. Um, Neptune and Uranus are slightly higher. So uh, Uranus is at 1.27 and Neptune is at 1.64 grams per centimeter cube. Making Neptune the most dense of all gas or ice giants. And its density is probably very high because it has a slightly larger core on the inside that's made up of um, metals and possibly things like silicates. So basically there's a smaller um, Earth-like planet on the inside that's making this a little bit more dense. Now there's uh, obviously other objects that are even denser than planet Earth uh, in our solar system and most of these are usually metallic asteroids or anything to do with like pure iron orbiting around um, the sun in in the uh, asteroid belt, uh, but in terms of planets, Earth is actually the most dense, and this is thanks to the very large iron core that we have in the center. Because of this iron core, and this is actually why we're coming to the importance of density, because of this um, metal core, 
we actually have our super, super, super important magnetic field, magnetosphere. The magnetosphere is formed by the circulating um, liquid metal, liquid iron that is inside our planet. Um, Venus actually very likely has liquid iron core as well because its density is very close and its mass is very close to our planet Earth, but unfortunately does not have a magnetic field. Now, why is, why is that? Well, that's very likely because Venus is spinning too slow. Because Venus is spinning so slow, it's not producing enough uh, effect to create this magnetosphere. Mercury, on the other hand, because it has such a large uh, metal core and because it's spinning just a little bit faster than Venus, uh, also has a bit of a magnetosphere. So this sort of summarizes this idea. For a planet, for exoplanets specifically, to be actually habitable, to be acceptable for a human um, species to survive, it needs to have a specific density. Specifically here, we're talking about a number that will indicate that the planet has a relatively high iron content. And so here, Venus, Mercury, and Earth, all three of these actually uh, are acceptable in that sense. Yes, uh, these two don't have a magnetosphere, but their density is acceptable uh, that we would actually expect this ex exoplanet to have some kind of a mag magnetosphere. Mars, on the other hand, has a relatively low density. It's under four, under four grams per centimeter cube. And because Mars's uh, density is so much lower than Earth, uh, we can assume that it doesn't really have much metal on the inside and thus doesn't have or doesn't produce necessary magnetosphere. Now, we've talked about magnetosphere many times and I've talked about the importance of magnetosphere many times. And so what this kind of indicates is that when we're looking for exoplanets, we need to really not just look at the mass or not just look at where this um, exoplanet is located. Specifically here, we're talking about um, the so-called habitable zone, also known as Goldilocks area, which is green in this case. This is where you can basically form the liquid water. Um, but we also need to look at if this particular exoplanet can maintain the magnetosphere. So very recently, we've discovered um, a very Earth-like exoplanet very, very close to us. This uh, particular exoplanet is known as Proxima b, located in the nearest star to us, Proxima Centauri. Now, Proxima b orbits Proxima Centauri, um, spinning around 14 times per orbit, and so here, one day is about 14 days. In other words, it spins a little bit faster than Mercury, so maybe, just maybe, we would expect it to have a little bit of a magnetosphere, as long as it's actually consistent of a very large amount of iron. Now, this is where the density is important. If the density of this planet is actually lower than uh, 4, we would probably think that it doesn't have enough metal, enough iron, and so the magnetosphere here would be non-existent. However, if the density is higher than 5, it's very likely that it does have magnetosphere, and it's very likely that this particular planet might actually be protected from really dangerous flares that would be coming from this red dwarf known as Proxima Centauri. So the habitability of this particular planet de depends highly on the density that we can discover by essentially looking directly at this planet and trying to measure its size. Now, this is something we don't really know how to do very well just yet, but it's something that we've been able to do with some of the planets. As a matter of fact, the least dense planet we've discovered so far, known as Tress 4, I'm going to show it to you in a second. Tress 4B, I believe it's called. Uh, there it is. This particular planet, which I'm, which I'm going to place right here as well, is known as a poofy planet. It's basically a poofy gas giant. Its uh, density is very, very low. It's about 0.169 or 0.17 grams per centimeter cube. It is a lot, a lot, a lot less dense than even Saturn, about four times less dense than Saturn. It's called a poofy planet because it's essentially very, very gaseous, so it has a lot of gas. And uh, since we were able to measure the density of this planet, we can use similar techniques to measure the densities of other exoplanets. So, in essence, in a nutshell, once we find an exoplanet, we don't just need to find its mass, we also need to try to discover its density. 
density is higher than five, mean that maybe just maybe there is a magnetosphere and we can potentially make this a habitable world in the future. Density is lower than four, suggests that this planet doesn't have enough iron and thus would not probably have enough magnetosphere for us to survive. And that's essentially why density is so important. And so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to possibly share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games. And maybe even leave me a comment. Tell me what else do you think about density? Have I forgotten to mention something else important and interesting about it? Now let's change Proxima B into the same density as the poofy planet Tress uh, 4B. And let's look at what is going to appear as compared to, let's just say, our beautiful planet Earth. Let's place planet Earth next to it and take a look at them. Look at that, so tiny. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something completely different or possibly something that you may enjoy even more. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. Oops, I accidentally destroyed them both. My bad. <laughs>